Guys, it's October, so you know what that means. We need a creepy ass webtoon recommendation. And today, I've got a real good one. The story we're about to get into focused on a poor individual with amnesia stranded on an unnamed island with the most sus family in existence. Like these guys would fit perfectly with the folks from Everything is Fine. But what really got me about this wreck is that it's written by Carnby Kim, the same genius who wrote Sweet Home and Bastard. Now it doesn't make sense that the first Carnby Kim creation I analyze is this and not the last two manhwa I mentioned. No, not really. But this is something that a lot of you recommended to me after my Everything is Fine video. And after just reading the first few chapters, I knew I couldn't walk away from this, bro. This manhwa needs a video. So without further ado, let's talk about Pigpen. Our story begins with our poor amnesia-stricken protagonist. He's not given a name, so we're just gonna call him Protagun. Protagun just woke up on an unknown shore and he has no idea how he got here or where he is. He finds a mailbox, posts it on the shore, and walks around the place to see what he's dealing with. And he soon realizes this is a whole island. My man is stranded here on an unnamed island that is not looking good already. On top of that, he has no phone connection, so if some shush happens over here, he has nobody he could call on for help. He makes his way through the island and eventually finds this big house in the middle of it. And the way they present this house, I'm really surprised he got hype after seeing it, bro. I wouldn't want to walk in this place. First off, there's a big question of why there's this big mansion on an unnamed island. Second, when he sees it, lightning strikes the place like it's some bad omen. This is like begging to be put in a horror movie situation, but that's besides the point. After all that, we move to a flashback in a seafood restaurant. The owner of the store is watching some news report where they're revealing that a bunch of people have been going missing recently. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that Protagun is one of these missing people. But speaking of Protagun, he was actually in the restaurant listening to these reports. He finishes his food, leaves the money at the table, but before he leaves, the store owner is like, Wait a minute, don't I know you from somewhere? Then he pulls up on Protagun with the craziest face like, oh wait, yeah, I def remember you. And I feel like this is one big staple with Carnby Kim's works. My man knows how to choose the faces for his menacing characters. Like this scene reminds me of all the crazy ass people in Shotgun Boy that make these same kinds of faces. If a person in real life looked at me just like this, I would have to fight them off principle, bro. For my own safety, like, come on, look at his face. But anyway, after that crazy moment, our protagonist wakes up in an unknown room. Unknown and unnamed are gonna be the words of the day here because there are a lot of things here that are not given a name and we're not really sure of. But after he wakes up, he checks inside the room and he peeps a woman mopping up what looks like blood. So this is when I started thinking, oh shit, this lady and whoever she's working with, they definitely kill people for fun, bro. Whose blood are you mopping up? Death can't be in animals because why are you slaughtering animals in your own house? Plus, it being an animal would be way too easy, bro. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume they'd be out here killing people. But Protag is trying to figure shit out. So he's like, hey, lady, what's good? Can you tell me where we are? But homegirl deflects and is like, oh can't you tell we're in my house? She tells him that her youngest daughter found him outside last night and brought him in. And that this is actually a bed and breakfast. A bed and breakfast in the middle of nowhere? That doesn't make any sense. To maintain a b, b you have to have customers, right? Where are the customers, lady? You're on an unnamed island with no one here, just you and your family, and you have a b, &B here? The sus vibes are skyrocketing and we're still just in chapter one. So with that, Protag could ask once again, can you tell me exactly where we are? He's trying to be more clear this time. And she deflects by reminding him that he's only in his boxers right now. All of his clothes must have been wet from the rain last night. So with that, Protag couldn't head back into his room embarrassed, but he shook and I'm shook too. Not only do you have a B&B &B in the middle of nowhere, but you're not telling my guy where he is? Like, you know he's not asking about being in a house or not. He's asking about his exact location. He needs coordinates, bro. The fact that you're not giving that to him means y'all are planning some shit. I'm pretty sure they're gonna eat him. I don't know yet, but this shit is called pig pen. Obviously, animals are involved. We already saw blood. Right now, I'm going from they murder people for fun to they murder and eat them for fun, probably. But homeboy is low-key freaking out in his room until the oldest daughter of the family pops in named Rami. Now, first impressions of this girl. I feel like her role in this family is to make Protag couldn't feel comfortable. You know, she's around his age, it looks like. Maybe she's supposed to do some. I don't know, but from jump, I don't trust her. She brings him some clothes to put on and he admits that he has amnesia. And this girl that ass turns away, laughs and whispers to herself saying, perfect. All right, 
B&B, middle of nowhere, mom person wiping up blood first thing in the morning, and now we have a daughter laughing about Protag Kun's amnesia and also saying that's perfect? Nah, bro. Mm -mm. They definitely eat people. I'm calling it now. I don't even know what they really do, but they definitely eat people, bro. They have to. And to make shit worse, he thinks, all right, maybe the mom was just bugging. Maybe this girl could tell me where I'm at. So he asks her, can you tell me exactly where I am? And while her family watches from the door, she's like, can't you tell? We're in my house. Not gonna hold you. If I was in the spot, I don't know if I could have stopped myself from running away at that moment, bro. You got two people not telling me where I'm at and some lady was wiping off blood. I know I'm saying it a lot, but that part really f***s me up, bro. I would have to juke the girl, punch the father, and then dip to find my way out because I'm not staying here, bro. You're out of your mind. But with that, he finds out it's breakfast time. So he meets the rest of the family at the table. There he finds out that the eldest son, Minu, is responsible for taking care of the pig farm and their youngest daughter, is in charge of slaughtering the animals for food. You have a grown ass man as your son and a grown woman as your daughter, but you're choosing the child to kill the animals. Okay, this family ain't right, bro. And just like last time, Protag couldn't ask about where he's at and they once again ignore his question. So that night for his own safety, my man sneaks a kitchen knife from the kitchen and puts it under his pillow. Good, good because you are not safe, my man. However, we soon realize this is a terrible mistake because the mom comes knocking on his door like, hey, there is a missing kitchen knife. It wouldn't be you who stole it, right? Luckily, she shrugs it off, but my man is shook. And he also realizes at this point that his door does not have a lock on it. So man has no privacy while he's with this family who looks like they're down to eat his soul. Like, bruh, <laughs> Save this man, please. Anyway, that night, because he can't sleep, he looks outside and finds this new guy on the island, a guy he's never met before. So he decides to go outside and talk to the guy, even though this is a terrible idea because the mom is already sussing you out about the missing knife. You think it's a good idea to go missing from your room? Stop it, bro. Like, I'm all for escaping, but at least escape in a smart way, damn. So he goes inside and talks to this guy. This guy's name is Tae Hui, by the way. And apparently, Tae Hui knows him. He says that he saw him on the night that he appeared on this island. And this is where it's revealed that some dude rolled up behind Protag Kun as he was as he found this house and knocked him out with the shovel. So now whatever hope I have that maybe I was getting the wrong idea, you know, maybe this family's not that bad, maybe I'm just over assuming shit, all that hope completely flew away. Because if you're willing to knock out this dude, instead of kindly walk up to him and say, hey, it seems that you're lost, do you need some help? Do you need like shelter or some shit? If you're instead going to knock him out with a shovel, these people cannot be trusted, bro. But at the telling him that, Taehui's like, hey, stop asking about where you are. That's stupid. These people are crazy. What you need to be doing is proving your worth if you want to survive. So it looks like Taehui's also a captive or something like that on this island. But I'm still not sure if he can be trusted because I feel like in situations like this, it's super easy for someone in the same spot as you to rat you out to save their own ass. So is Taehui a friend right now? I don't know. Anyway, with that, Protag could head back inside, but he can't fall asleep. And to make shit even worse, the mom looks through the peephole to see if he's sleeping and he acts like he's unconscious and shit, right? But she's like, hmm, I wonder how a boy like that can still be asleep in a situation like this. Which means she knows this is sus. So this just further sinks into the fact that Protag Kun is not safe here, bro. Like you have people who are acting strange. They know they're acting strange to scare you and they don't care. They rather watch you squirm and plan out how they're gonna use you later. So after that sleepless night, it's breakfast time again. Protag could once again joins the family for breakfast, but this time it's mad tense. The father switches up immediately and is like, yo, somebody was using my shoes outside last night and they didn't ask me. Now we all know it's Protag could, but he's keeping it quiet because he's like, this could be the moment that they kill me for, for trying to leave, you know? But the father ends up thinking it's Minu and the way Minu is shaking, you can tell this dude while out on his kids sometimes like me new shaking like his father's either gonna be his ass or worse kill him and feed him to the pigs so protag couldn't get up and is like nah it was me bro it was me i'm sorry i was bored last night i was i couldn't get any sleep i just wanted to go for a walk outside but what's strange is that after he says this the father ignores his anger over someone using his shoes and instead goes to oh you were bored you were bored in my house in my bnb Oh, we gotta change that, bro. And then he brings Protagon out to go shooting some birds. Yo, why? 
I would have rather you yelled at me or just kill me on the spot, bro. I feel like my heart would be beating out of its chest if homeboy brought me to go shooting after finding out I stole his f shoes. I don't know, in that moment, it would be impossible to think that this man is not gonna kill me, bro. He's holding a shotgun, shooting birds, and as he's shooting them, he talks about how there is always one that leaves the flock, always one straggler. And after he shoots it, he's like, and that straggler always gets murked. So this is when the similarities to Get Out really start to sink in. I mean, we already saw it with the protagonist being someone new to this family and watching as his family acts super strange in front of, the, in front of him, even though they're trying to seem like they're homey and they're friendly and but here we get more of it because just like in Get Out where they use animals to portray the state that humans end up being in in the movie, in this scene, the way he's talking about these birds is almost foreshadowing what I think may happen to the protagonist or somebody else. I have no idea if Carnby Kim is a fan of Get Out, but I definitely feel the inspiration here. Anyway, after the father's done spouting his nonsense and shooting birds, he has the gun to Protag Kun. And with that gun, Protag Kun does the dumbest shit he could have ever done. He points the gun at the father's back, knowing full well there's a whole psychopathic family waiting to take revenge if he kills the dad. And with the gun pointed at him, he starts asking all the questions he had before, because he is pissed. He's like, where am I? Who's that random guy that's not a part of your family that works on this island? Why the f do you have a B&B &B on an unnamed island that no one knows about? Are we even near South Korea anymore? But then the father honestly does some funny shit. He calmly grabs the gun and not only answers all of his questions, but he also guilt trips Protag Kun, bro. He's like, first of all, this island has no name. That guy you saw is an employee, not a slave. And on top of all that, may I remind you, this is a B&B. &B. We took you in, fed you, and now I'm bringing you out to shoot all for free. And I'm not gonna hold you. He's making a lot of good points here. Like, you have the gall to point a gun at me after I took you in and put you in a room and I, what, I could've just left you outside? Or worse, feed you to my pigs? Then the father points the gun at Protag Kun and he's like, if you wanna shoot a shotgun, you have to reload before every shot. But you most definitely knew that already if you pointed it at me, right? Cause why else would you point the gun at me? You weren't trying to kill me, were you? And with that, Protag couldn't just last it off because he has no foot to stand on right now. If he answers wrong, the guy will definitely kill him. So he's like, yeah, I wasn't trying to shoot you, bro. What? I, w I just had some questions I, I wanted answers to. Come on, like, put the gun down, fam. Luckily, the father lets it go. And with that, Protag couldn't wanders off to another part of the island. He finds the same mailbox he planted, but what's weird about it is that the tip is now pointed like a spear. Originally, it was a stub, which means somebody not only messed around with this shit, but also fashioned it into a weapon. Why you need a weapon, bro? Who are you fighting? And to make it even weirder, he opens the mailbox to find a picture with a five on one side and a blurred image on the next. Damn, I know I said this felt like Get Out, but this is also starting to low key feel like the Nonary games with the amount of clues that he's finding. And it's one of the things that I really love about this manhwa because as he finds all these little hints at future things that may happen or things that may foreshadow unfortunate events that will happen to him, you can't help but continue reading because you wanna find out what the bigger picture is here. You know, it's like everything is fine. And I feel like that's how you make a good mystery horror. Get the audience asking enough questions to want to continue reading. If you just rely off of scary images and all that shit, I don't know, it just kind of feels boring after a while. Anyway, after finding the picture, Romy finds him and they go fishing together. Aw sh**, here she comes, making the protag feel all calm and sh**, and she's gonna wild out soon. But while they're fishing, they have a heart to heart and she tells them basically everything about the family. Her father moved them here because he doesn't like the city. The mother knows nothing about the outside world and is a narcissist. The older brother is a loner and is kind of in his head all the time. And the youngest sister is just crazy, bro. Like that that's about it. Because her parents allow her to slaughter animals for a living, she's gotten a little bit too murder happy. Now on one end, I appreciate this moment because maybe these guys can form a connection. But on the other side that has like 90% of me, I'm like, nah, bro, get away. She's mad untrustworthy. You may be feeling her now, but like watch her brother pull up with a shotgun and shoot you in the back of the head when you least expect it. Speaking of brother, one thing I forgot to mention, while they're having this heart to heart, some random kid keeps on watching them from afar. And I'm not sure this is the daughter because this same kid was shown earlier using Protag Kun's phone that he lost while trying to get to his house. So even though this whole moment may seem nice, it's still sus as hell. 
Anyway, their whole heart-to-heart -heart conversation is cut short because a fish is tugging at Protag Kun's line. She tries to help him reel it in, and in good old anime fashion, she clumsily falls over him. Now, at first, it looks like she's gonna use this moment to finally take the Protag Kun's guard down. She's gonna whisper sweet nothings, be like, oh my god, you're so attractive, pull up for a kiss, and then stab him in the gut. And the family will then proceed to eat his remains. But what happens instead truly caught me off guard. Instead of getting up, she looks around like she's making sure nobody's spying on them. And then she looks down at Protag so that her hair blocks both their faces. And she straight up says, help me get out of here, bro. What? Is this not your family? I thought you were down for the family cause. Like you were all happy talking about the tea you were given to the protagonist a little bit before during breakfast, but now you wanna leave? And what about the whole thing where you were like perfect to his amnesia? Like what? There's a part where she mentioned that she thought it would be cool to help him get his memory back, which is why she was happy he had amnesia. But still, you turning around and saying perfect in that weird way does not defend your case here, bro. Top of that, who's the person that was watching y'all have this whole conversation? Why the hell is the whole family on edge? And what the hell is up with that picture he found, bro? To find out all that and more, you're gonna have to read the manhwa for yourself. I know y'all probably want me to cover the whole manhwa, but this is another story that is best experienced blind. But let me know how you feel about it. Have you read Pigpen before? Are you gonna read it now if you haven't already? In terms of sus factor, how do you think it compares to Everything is Fine? Just out of curiosity. With that being said, like if you enjoyed the video, comment with other manhwa, manga, or comic you want me to cover like this, and subscribe to see more content just like this. Shout out to all my patrons, I really appreciate you guys. Without you, I would not be able to make content like this. And lastly, check out my website, thedontyverse.com, for some new fly-ass merch. With all that being said, be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.